Hey guys, we're going to talk about seven things you should absolutely not do before you go on your European backpacking trip, okay? From experience, okay, I went on my first backpacking trip solo. It was two months through Europe. I saw about 15 countries. It was absolutely amazing. And if you want to see that whole experience, I recorded the entire thing. I vlogged every single day. I will throw the playlist up here and also in the description box below. Without further ado, these are seven things you should not do if you are going on your first European backpacking trip. The first one, let's talk about about your data plan when you were in Europe. You probably have a phone plan with like Verizon or Sprint. Each of those major phone companies have different packages for international travel. The thing that you should not do is go with your phone carrier's international plan. And the reason why is because it is so much more expensive than just getting an eSIM. But let me explain to you what an eSIM is because I was so confused and this was like the main thing that was freaking me out before going to Europe. An eSIM is basically an app that you can download on your phone you can look at the amount of data that you have left on the plan that you've purchased. Once you install the eSIM, you can go on the internet, you can use your phone as if you would in the United States. It's amazing because it's so much cheaper. For example, I use Airalo and I'll put the link for this one down below. It was way cheaper than going with Verizon or like my phone carrier's plan. I installed it in America so that when I landed in Europe, my first country I went to was Germany. I just landed in Germany and it was already working. So it was super seamless. I save so much money doing that. When you're traveling by yourself, you're going to be using Google Maps like it's your life. You're going to be using a lot, a lot of data to get around and just for your safety. The second thing you should absolutely not do is buy euros at the airport. I know when you land in a new country, it's like, oh my God, I need to get the currency that I'm in. Like you need to just calm down. When you land in a new country, just take a deep breath and realize that Apple Pay or like your credit card will probably get you really, really far, okay? When I was in Italy, I used the most like paper euros. Other than that, I use my phone. I just tap to pay for practically everything. The reason why you should not buy euros at the airport is they're 100% ripping you off. And the conversion rate is terrible. They basically target tourists because they know they're stupid. And when they get off the plane, they're gonna convert their dollars for euros at a terrible rate and they're gonna make all this money. You're gonna have like a little bit of peace of mind knowing you have euros but the thing is you can use your credit card so don't do that don't okay also when you're in touristy city centers the same thing will happen they will be like oh here convert convert your money over like there's no fees or whatever they're just trying to play you you go in there and you'll ask what the fees are and it's going to be something absolutely ridiculous okay so just don't do that the third thing that you should absolutely not do is reserve an airbnb with less than three stars or no reviews okay this was a mistake that i made it was a good learning experience i was in barcelona and the airbnb that i got was horrendous there were barely any reviews. The stars were next to terrible. Basically, I was sleeping in a closet and I'll throw the video up here if you just want to watch the whole thing. It was, an, it was a nightmare. I thought that the host was a girl, but it was actually a guy. And so that was a little bit uncomfortable. And then I was sleeping in a closet that had a window on the wall because it's a closet. It's not supposed to be a bedroom. The lock was outside of the door. So like it was ex extremely unsafe. I was not comfortable it was just a really bad experience drop a little bit extra money for your accommodation just to give yourself a peace of mind and know that like when you fall asleep you will wake up in a safe place that just ruined my barcelona experience for like two days it was really bad and the other thing is make sure you reach out to your host in advance as well like just to make sure you know what that check-in process is like in advance because if you get there and you're like how where do i find the keys like how do i find my airbnb and your host doesn't answer you or you don't have data or something crazy then you're screwed i literally changed airbnbs every like three days so i became a pro at it but if you can message your host a couple days in advance just to verify the check-in process you're going to give yourself a huge peace of mind as well and not run into any issues like i did okay the fourth thing that you should absolutely not do for your first backpacking solo trip is book flights or bus transportation at night and the reason i say this is because imagine arriving to a place where it's pitch black outside the country does not do ubers at all so you have to call a taxi and you're already kind of nervous about that because taxi drivers are notorious for basically kidnapping people your airbnb host is sleeping you don't know how to get in you can't find the keys and so you're basically without a accommodation for for the night or you could be traveling you get 
off the bus and you're walking to your combination and then someone's walking in the street and basically like kills you i don't know obviously that could happen anywhere like you could literally be in america walking down the street and something crazy like that could happen so what i would recommend doing and this is how i plan my trip was never arriving at a place at night i always try to arrive in the middle of the day which i know it eats up one of your days because it becomes a travel day but if you are kind of like a go-getter then the minute you arrive in the country you can just start exploring and just have a good time like the minute you arrive number five do not forget to make copies of your passport and bring them with you and like hide them within your backpack i actually emailed myself a photocopy of my passport and my id and then i also printed out copies and i put them in my backpack in two different places i've been robbed in the past and i did not have copies of anything and that made it really really hard to get through security and that was in america so imagine being in a foreign country and not having any sort of identification you don't want to run into that situation the sixth thing that you should absolutely not do is bring the wrong adapter when you're traveling when you have your phone charger and you plug it into the wall those little prongs only work for the u.s so when you go to like portugal and you want to plug in the phone it's not going to work because portugal's plug system is much different it's the european plugs so make sure you bring the right one because when i arrived in london i had the wrong adapter and so i couldn't plug in any Thing, nothing was going to charge um typically like many stores will have an adapter if you want to arrive in a place and just like immediately start charging just bring the right adapter and just skip that whole stuff altogether. and then the last thing that you should absolutely not do before you leave for your trip is not buy travel insurance okay if you arrive in a country and anything bad happens you can just rely on your travel insurance to cover you okay so this was really helpful for me when i was in croatia because i stepped on a sea urchin and i had to go to the doctor in croatia which was super super sketchy and i'll throw up a video here if you want to watch the whole process i basically got robbed if you will by the doctor he charged me like 400 euros for the surgery and he didn't even get the sea urchin spikes out of my foot because i had travel insurance i was covered and and if anything bad happens in terms of like cancellations of flights and things like that you can also be covered Covered by travel insurance i think i spent like 200 dollars to see 15 countries over two months so it's not terrible and especially like if you run into a situation where you have to go to the emergency room and drop like thousands and thousands of dollars it makes a lot more sense just to put a little bit up front just to keep yourself safe and remember to have fun because i just remember before i went on my trip i was like there's so many things i hope i don't die oh my god and i was freaking out the whole time and i just forgot i'm like this is this is a once in a lifetime thing and it's just so exciting you can always go back like that's one thing to keep in mind but just like before you go it's like this is this is going to be amazing. That's it for this video. Let me know if you want more videos about how to prepare for your solo backpacking trip to Europe. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.